Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Park and Recreation Advisory Committee meeting. Today is March 15, 2021. We do have a quorum, and I'll call this meeting to order. I need to get a motion and a second for approval of the last minutes from the last meeting. I make a motion to accept the minutes from the last meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, before I turn this over to uh, David and Kathy, first of all, uh, I want to thank Deborah Bother and Miss Mary Jane Skinner for the years of service that they served on this board, and we appreciate you very much, and we wish you the best of luck in your endeavors. Uh, what can I say? We've not had a meeting since. I just want to throw out my condolences. I know it's later in the game, but Mr. Bob Simon, who sat here for years, Mr. Bob was probably one of the first people I ever met in Laverne when I first moved here and I started the Laverne Youth Basketball in 1995. It didn't have anything to do with the city, but he, he run me down and told me the ins and outs about Laverne and the, the sports programs. So uh, Mr. Bob just wasn't a friend. He was a colleague. He, uh, you see him at the ballparks and everywhere. And I know about everybody on this board will always remember Mr. Bob. He's been around a long time. He was, a, he was a mentor. With that being said, we do have some new members. Mr. Giles Perry, uh, I don't know that we've ever met. We just met a while ago. We did have an extensive conversation, and uh, he's got some good ideas, David, about some uh, adult-type stuff. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing your ideas, see if we can get some adult things going on back in the city like we used to have. Uh, we used to have some really good stuff. Mr. Rick Autry, everybody knows, <clears throat> excuse me, everybody knows Rick. Rick's on my Senior Citizen Advisory Committee also because he is a senior. Uh, Rick's been around a long time. Uh, me and Rick uh, was together in the football programs back in the 90s. So he's been around, he's done a lot of coaching. And Laura Davison, who uh, Laura used to be on this board years ago, she brings a lot to the table. Uh, you're gonna find out she can be a little bit overbearing and wiry at times, but she's got good ideas and that's what we need. Now for those of you who have not met this young lady, she's the one that's been sending you the emails. And I'll let David introduce her to you guys. David? Yeah, this is our new admin assistant, Miss Sheila. She's been with us um, probably going on her third week now. Um, we're excited to have her on board, so y'all please be kind and gentle with her. And then since we've met last, um, Kathy has taken the job as the events coordinator. Um, she pretty much did that job over the course of the last year and a half anyway, so it was finally good to get her into that role permanently. I, I totally 100% agree with that statement. Thank you. Uh, we say it every meeting, and I'm going to keep saying it until she proves me wrong that uh, the city events have absolutely flourished since you have come in and took the bull by the horn. So ha hopefully with you and uh, David, Sheila, and Drew, you, you guys can make it work, and uh, we'll sit back and give David all the credit for your hard work. <laughs> so with that being said David let's get started on our agenda um, Easter drive through that is scheduled for March the 27th we are partnering with the library and the police department um, a lot of communities weren't doing anything if it was a traditional egg hunt we probably wouldn't do it either we're going to try to set it up as a drive through we'll be stationed at the back of the park um, where it kind of dead ends into the apartment complex Traffic should come through the front entrance at the park. We'll filter them through the back, um, through the um, apartments when they're done. 
We will have um, trailers there with pre-made bags by age group. So when the kids come through, there's really no need to get out of the car. Tell us what age group you have. We'll give you the bags. There will be golden eggs in some of those with uh, directions of how to claim your prize. And I think we will also have information where you can actually text your picture to um, the mid-10 selfie. Correct. The mid-10 selfie. Um, I don't know if they're going to have an Easter Bunny background or how they're going to have that, but you can text your picture to them. It's a service that we're providing as a city, and then they will send you back an Easter picture that you can use. Aww, That's a great that. idea. <laughs> have we got an Easter Bunny? <clears throat> Um, I'm sure we will have one by then. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm um, just curious. I think since we we started it, I know at least one other community has reached out to see how we're trying to do this because so everybody's been locked down. So I think it's a good, safe way that we can finally start um, giving back. You know, we've been pretty fortunate here. We've been able to pull off our bigger events where most communities were shut down completely. So. I think most communities are still going to bypass this one just because it's a traditional egg hunt and they want to see the kids run wild. But we feel like if, if we can do anything to give back and make stuff start opening back up, then this is a good way to do it. Anybody have any questions about it before I ask mine? What's that time again for cars? It starts at 10 a.m. And it, we have down till 1130, but it's also while supplies last. And then Box 100 will be doing the traffic control during the event as well. Uh, my question is, that's coming up quick. Mm -hmm. It's about two weeks from here, yep. How are we going to go about, and this involves you guys, how are we going to go about getting the word out? We've, um, we've been pushing it on our Facebook mm -hmm. pages, um, and it's been getting pretty good feedback from everyone we know. So. Yeah, you guys, please tell everybody you know we're going to continue to push it out. Um, Facebook, our parks page, um, City Hall will push it out on their page. So, yeah, we'll take. There's also the big the, the mobile The sign. billboards are out on both sides of the city as well. Yeah. And my understanding, Mr. Perry is the mayor of uh, Lake Forest, so we'll expect him to. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we hope we have a good turnout. We hope we have enough supplies for everybody. Um, we'd love to see us run out of supplies, but we don't want to run out early. Mm -hmm. Which is one reason we've kind of not pushed out too much to the outside communities because we don't want to turn kids away. And anybody that's watching this meeting at home, please feel free to, to uh, spread the word. We, we need your help. All right, movies in the park. Um, I will let Kathy handle that one. She is setting that up, and she is taking total control of that. Um, April 23rd, it starts at dark. Um, Senior Center is going to be there selling concessions as a fundraiser for the city. And we'll also be handing out the tickets again this year, so that will be giving away the, a few prizes at the end of the movie. So, and it's the Crudes, A New Age. So. Well, I, I guess I'm... I don't have a clue what that is. Neither. It, it's the newest release <laughs> from the license company is how we picked it. It's a new release from, I believe, it just got released in February. Yeah, I think it's a pretty popular yeah. kids movie because we, we try to aim family friendly there. And evidently, uh, I'm kind of like you. Uh, I'm out of the loop since my kids are pretty much, you know, grown and on their own just about. Um, but it was a popular movie that came out um, that got good, positive, family-friendly mm -hmm. feedback. Um, so if it's the second in that line, the first one had to be pretty popular. Mm -hmm. All right. We got to bring JJ out. Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, watch it. It's a good one. The first one was. Oh, good, you know, you one. know about it. I do. I, I should have known the yeah. geek would know about it. I got two Maybe, maybe you can fill us in on it then. Uh, it's a prehistoric movie. It's, it's a kid's movie. It's, it's animated. It's like, you know, the first family. Uh, hey, Jensen all, like, is the a... prehistoric problems, and this is the, the next iteration after, you know, the big apocalypse of the, the first movie. I call him a geek because I'm going to tell you. So this man... Flintstones. Yeah, that's what I'm He mean. knows... Yeah, it's, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. He knows anything and everything about a computer. Anything you want to know about it, he knows about it. So... I didn't hear him say that. 
Uh, now we get to move on to the, uh, oh, this is the other movie in the park. Yeah. So May to August, we're going to do a movie in the park the second Friday of every month. We bought that new movie screen that in, all, in April, we had already reserved one from last year. So we had a credit. So in May, we're going to start using our own inflatable movie screen. Cool. And we'll have a rain out day each month of the following Friday in case there's any weather conditions that stop us from having it. Are you planning on setting this up where you did last year where people can park their cars? Um, our first watch? couple we're trying to set up on the, the, football. On the football field. Everybody bring their chairs. Yes, mm -hmm. The one the one in April is going to be on the football field. The one in May, more than likely, is going to be on the football field. We took delivery of this thing around Christmas time. We haven't had the opportunity to blow it up, so we'll, we'll have to do that one day and try to figure out the ins and outs of it. It does come with an FM transmitter that we can move it to the front at some point and do a drive-in. Um, we just haven't figured, had time to figure all that out yet. So, How big is the screen? It's uh, 30, 30 foot wide and 17 foot tall. Whoa. Wow. That's big. <laughs> That's B. That's a horse. And will there be concessions at each movie? The, the senior center will do it at the movies um, each month as well. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Will that guy be there selling them light up things and twirly birds and all that that we've not, seen? Not scheduled um, yeah. as of now. Yeah. Okay. Kids love them. Oh, yeah. And that's something we can look at doing as giveaways, like the glow necklaces and so forth. So. All right, Dave, we're going to move on to the uh, soon-to-be world-famous Laverne Block Party. I tell you, I think it is becoming famous. It's getting a whole lot of traction. Um, we have more interest. I think everybody's just been tied up. There's not been nothing to do, so we're getting quite a bit of interest in everything we've done from 4th of July last year forward. Um, we've gotten quite a bit of public feedback on it. Um, block party May 22nd, and I don't have, is it five to? It's five to eight. Five to eight. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll let Kathy jump in on there, too. She's the one that has been scheduling everything, so she is taking um, everything as far as vendors and the whole lineup and run it down. All right. And um, this one's going to have a twist to it. You're going to like this. We've got a cornhole tournament scheduled. Yeah. Um, we've contracted Music City <laughs> Cornhole to actually run the tournament. So they're going to do, um, they're going to set up the boards, provide the boards, do the scoring and everything. So we'll have that during the event. Um, we've got food trucks. We'll have civic craft and business vendors, a live DJ, dunk tank, fire departments bringing their PR trailer. And then uh, right now we have 32 vendors signed up. And we'll be advertising this on Jack Tivity's web page, mobile billboards, trying to get as much traffic there as we can. Get people all over the county. Mm -hmm. And I volunteered the board members, especially the new ones, the new board members to sit in the dump booth. <laughs> I knew, knew y'all wouldn't mind, so we appreciate it. <laughs> Is the escape room going to be there again this year? The mobile escape room will awesome. be there, yes. That was a big hit. And we'll also have inflatables there as well. Um, Club Knockout is going to come and man the inflatables for us during the event. So, I don't think uh, I don't think Bruce is going to go for our axe throwing. And well, we've got to try to get, we're, we've kind of got that scheduled for OTF. It's OTF. Okay. <laughs> so we haven't given up on that yet. We we're going to wait till this was over tonight and forward him the information we have um, for that and just see. If you don't try, you can't be told no. So we'll, f we'll figure out how that works. We'd like to see it. Um, we'd like to start doing a little more progressive stuff in the city. Um, there's probably some hoops to jump through, but <clears throat> on something like that, um, the, the company that provides the service carries the liability insurance. Mm -hmm. So it stars and strikes. It's like $20 per person an hour. And so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it at some point. <laughs> if you bring it here, then I'll do it. Well, I think it was set up for. You know, we don't get too far off topic. I think it was set up five dollars for five throws. It was. Maybe. It was five for five throws, ten for ten throws, and then they had an unlimited option, but he, he didn't quote that yet because that was based on how many people were at the event. 
So um, all the cost to the city was just the price to add the city as additional insured onto his insurance. <coughs> so, yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. Steve, I'll do that with you. Uh, Don't no. Then the next one, everybody's favorite, and uh, I know Kathy's, she's been super busy on this one, but the farmer's market. We have moved it to Saturdays to 8 to noon. So um, we currently have 21 vendors signed up. Wow. I've got a few more that have expressed interest that have not received their registration forms yet. So we've got, we got a lot of feedback. We had sent out a questionnaire just um, asking if they would add, we want, originally we we're gonna add a Saturday, but the response is um, all the produce vendors we had, could, they backed out on Tuesday. So we ended up dropping Tuesday and only offering the Saturday market because of the response that we received. So, yep. And I'm sure we'll talk more about this uh, the next month and so on and get everything, you know. And then, last and certainly not least, uh, Old Timers Day, it's been, uh, it's been moved up to September, so. Uh, yeah, it was a little cold last year. That's probably about the furthest we pushed it out. Yeah. Um, last year we pushed it out a little further because we really didn't know what schools were doing due to the COVID and we were trying to give schools opportunity to get back in session because the local kids play such a big part in that as far as the bands or, or just families coming out. Um, this year we've moved it back into September. Hopefully the weather will co cooperate with us a little bit more. Um, it's going to be the 18th is actual day of OTF. Um, we're having the kickoff concert that Friday night, September the 17th. What about the parade that day, David? The parade is going to start, it usually starts at 10. It'll start here at City Hall and end at the park. Um, parade usually takes roughly an hour, a little less than an hour sometimes, depending on how many people we have. Um, kind of be the same lineup, opening remarks after that. Um, we have we haven't got the contract completely signed yet i don't think um for resurrection friday night eagle, for both of them resurrection is signed eagle maniacs has not been um resurrection was our headliner last year pretty good turnout for the even the even for the bad weather we had the weather was good it was just cold it was 45 cold. degrees by the time they got on um, but it, even with that being said, that was still probably one of the larger crowds we've had. So we'd kind of like to have them back to see if we can grow that. They've got a pretty decent following around here in this area. Um, so they're coming back on Friday night for the kickoff concert. It's a resurrection. It's a journey tribute band. Um, amazing band. They, they put on a great show. And then Saturday night for our headliner is going to be the Eagle Maniacs. They're an Eagles tribute band that makes the circuit here in the state. Um, they're a phenomenal tribute band also. So I'll be the elephant in the room here. I just want to ask about this and see if, how uh, far you all have got. And you all may or may not know. I know uh, Jensen and Carol does. What's the latest word with the beard? <laughs> um, we are going to try to – that is – should be on the – agenda for the board to approve it next month for OTF. Um, we're not going to, we're not going to propose it for July 4th at this time. OTF is the only one. July 4th is such a um, smaller time frame. We think it's hard for a vendor to pay that, to pay the fee to, to do that and get their money back. So with OTF being basically a two day, I think it's more feasible for somebody to come in and recoup some of their money. What about the block party? Um, at this point, we're, we're not doing the block party either. It's just because we were running short on time on that one. The block party may be something we look at for next year because everything, any event that we would add to it um, would have to come before the board for approval. I don't think we can do a blanket event at this point um, and just name two or three events per year. So every event would have to come before the board, and then that same event would have to go before the beer board. And I noticed July 4th is not on here. I guess we'll talk about that next month when you know more about it. Um, I don't know how we missed July yeah. 4th. Yeah. Um, July right. 4th is on July 4th. It's a, a, it's a Sunday this year. Right. Yeah. Right. 
six to nine, I think. I know when nine. it is, David. I was just. <laughs> well, some people don't know it's on a weekend. <laughs> I think we do is on July 4th. And I believe we've got mixed tape um, looking to schedule them for the entertainment for the event. Who? Mixed tape. They performed at Old Timers a few years ago. Okay. Yeah, they, they performed at Old Timers. They were the kickoff that day, and there were some issues with the sound equipment, um, I think, on the city side. And I don't think they had a very pleasant experience, so we'd like to bring them back because I think we've got those bugs worked out. <clears throat> um, it's kind of like a – I don't say they're, an, they're a tribute band because they just play all kinds of 80s, and 80s pop music. Uh, so I think they're a cover band, just general cover. Yeah, pretty much. They could play anything from Bon Jovi to whatever, some club mix, you know, that was on, on the radio back in the 80s. So us older folks in here, we could probably be digging that. The Eurythmics. Yeah. <laughs> the Eurythmics, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know if they are going to hold a pageant this year before Old Timers or no? I think at this point... We kind of moved away from the pageant because we were so much up in the air. And even when it was scheduled last year, there was another organization doing one a couple weeks ahead of us at the same location that was here in Laverne. So at this point, we're not 100% sure we're going to continue to follow through with that because that organization put on two before the COVID hit. I don't even, well, they had two scheduled. I don't know if they were able to pull the last one off. Um, but it was still scheduled at the same school with the, basically the same kids from what we could tell as the one we had scheduled three weeks later. Um, and that thing takes so much, takes so much manpower in several city departments because um, you had several people here at City Hall that were in on the planning of it. There was so much manpower and overtime and just dedication to it that if somebody else is doing the same thing a couple of weeks before us, we weren't 100% sure we still needed to provide that well I think what I was thinking of if, if we're not gonna do that you know how um, you'll hear like the blueberry queen or the, if we could somehow incorporate something in the old timers festival so it's just for that and it's a every year occurrence and it could be you know just girls or you could do little boys little or however I don't want to leave anybody out but just something just for old timers so they could be like the festival queen. Kind of like the Beverly Hillbillies had the possum queen. Yes. <laughs> I think with the, and Kathy, David, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I think with the pageant, just like a lot of other stuff, there's so many ifs because of the COVID that when you start trying to make preparations for a lot of that stuff, and then the next thing you know, those numbers rise or go down. And, and once you put a bunch of wheels into motion, such as the pageant, then all of a sudden, the numbers spike or they say, well, you can't do this. And then those kids, walking out on that stage with a mask on and stuff is, you know, it's right. just, so what I- It doesn't I, necessarily have to be this year, but I would, if we're going to not really move forward in the future with an actual Miss Laverne pageant, I what think, if we did an old timers festival type pageant thing? I think with Kathy now at the ham, and I'm gonna put some pressure on her, but she likes it. Uh, once we get through this COVID to where everything is just kind of back to normal or wide open, I think she will probably blow us out of the water with a lot of ideas and, and things. Is that a fair? Well, we'll definitely try. <laughs> uh -huh. And I think with the, with the Miss Laverne pageant, I, there's been so much staff and turnover since it, it began. I think we were just kind of we, we were just thrown in the mix and we really didn't have any idea of what was going on. And then we were depending on, if it fell under the parks umbrella, we were depending on it to go off without a hitch. And when it didn't, and we didn't have a whole lot of control over it, everybody's looking at each other like, what just happened? You know, it's kind of one of them things you had, 
15 or 20 people involved and when it comes down to it you're dependent on three people that really don't have a whole lot of knowledge about the thing and i'm not saying that we want to get out of it completely it was just at this point if we were going to move kind of move away from it it was the best time since somebody else was already offering the same mm -hmm. type of thing right. it's kind of like the uh you, you changed the, the name of it though, but it used to be father-daughter dance type situation. Uh, again, I think that will come back. We just, we got to get through this pandemic thing. It's, it's ridiculous. Does anybody have any more questions for David or Kathy? Drew? So, uh, the next meeting will be April, what is that? I ain't got my glasses on. 19th. 19th. April 19th, 2021, same bat time, same bat station. So at this time, for you new members, we kind of just like to, we'll start with you, Mr. Perry. Do you have any comments, concerns, anything? Uh, if you'd pull your microphone up because everything's being recorded and the people at home is going to see you on TV. Currently, I don't. Ooh. Currently, I don't have any uh, questions or concerns. I'm just soaking everything in, making notes. Um, I'll be in touch with members with uh, you know ideas and you know about some things off some people in between now and the next time we meet. Oh, I do have a quick question. I do remember. Is there a um, like a billboard or an advertisement on on the page for the uh, Easter egg hunt, so I can maybe put it on my page and share it, or is, is it already one built like that? The Parks and Rec page has a Facebook event on the page that you could go on and share. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now that you're a, a member of a board, you actually have a Laverne, Tennessee .gov email. If you have any questions like that. You can either email me, or I guess he can. Would it be better to email me and let me work through you, or can he email you directly? Either, either way, way, yeah. Uh, she can, she can fill you in. Uh, I can tell you that the email is the best way to get a hold of them because they're they stay pretty busy. All right, Mr. Rick Autry will be up next. Welcome to the board, Mr. Autry. Glad I'm here. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, just listening, being a newbie to the board, just listening. I, I, the only thing that struck me today that I might have a question about is um, with the block party coming up, Resurrection, who I heard last year, um, they were so successful and so good. Have you thought about bringing them in for the, for the block party? We um, actually have a live DJ that's going to perform there. So the, the band would kind of conflict with the DJ because we had ha traditionally we've had a DJ at the event so we had already contracted with the DJ um, and in the future we wouldn't mm -hmm. you know we've kicked around the ideas of having live entertainment there I think what we're running into with like the resurrection or the Eagle Maniacs their contracts stipulate what we have to provide for them and the cost to get them here mm -hmm. um, and the stage trailer, which at the block party, we're not having to provide a stage trailer. We're not having to provide the sound system or the audio techs where thanks to this guy right here last year, uh, Steve Kimbrough blew it out of the water. That is by far the best setup we have ever had. That's kind of got us excited moving forward because we've always struggled with, with the sound system or the audio techs. It's, it seemed like the audio techs and, mu and the musicians could never get on the same page. Um, we didn't have that issue at all this year. We would definitely like to look at um, some live entertainment at the block party going forward. I just don't know what on, on what scale because by the time you start bringing in the entertainment, um, your stage trailer and paying audio tech and, you know, and um, the, for them to bring the equipment, um, that price gets up there for not being one of our major events. Mm -hmm. Now we could look at, uh, at entertainment that brings their own um, equipment and it usually is, is more doable for us because the cost is less, like a, a bar band or a typical band that makes a scene here. 
But when you start talking about resurrection or the egomaniacs, those, those type of people generally don't bring their own equipment, so that drives our cost up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you. I have um, access to people maybe who want to do internships for uh, the audio. Mm -hmm. That portion comes up to it. Would that be something that we could offer? As, or maybe, you know, in a community service, or, you know, they, they work for the city of Laverne and did this for the city of Laverne, like in the series that we're having DJs or, or live musicians throughout the series of the summer, that they could be the, on the, be the ones who actually did that every event. Could there be like an internship for that? Yeah, I think that would be awesome. Um, that would be something that we would have to work out with um, the, the audio techs that we bring in to make sure they don't have an issue with somebody kind of shadowing them. Because there's always, like at OTF, it was all hands on deck. What helped us a little bit was it was a hometown guy that we got, a, we got an exceptional deal at, plus our guys provided majority of the manpower. So we, we save where we can, which keeps him from bringing in other people because we provided all the legwork for him. So I'm sure he would, he would love to have runners or somebody shadow him. I, I can't speak for him, but um, we were very pleased with him. And once again, Mr. Perry, any, any time you've got some five deals pop into your head, go ahead and email them over. Now, don't get your feelings hurt if you don't hear back or whatever, because we have certain rules and regulations as a city government, which I'll be the first to tell you on camera that I don't like them, but I have to abide by them too. So. Would it be out of line to ask everybody to pray for no rain that day? No, sir. We would love to have no rain that day. <laughs> All right, Ms. Carol Haas. Uh, I'm just excited because the city's moving forward now with activities and stuff and the events that we've had during the lockdown, the big pandemic stuff. Everybody was safe. Everybody social distanced. I mean, they were very aware of the safety. I mean, even working in the senior uh, area well, with uh, Melissa and Linda, everybody that came up, they, you know, did adhere to, you know, our, our requests and stuff. So I'm looking forward to the movies in the park and the block party and attending everything. And I'm just, I'm really excited, especially for the farmer's market because we've already, the other committee, we've already got our plans up. So we'll discuss that Thursday night. <laughs> Mr. Jensen. Well, glad to see everybody again. I know it's been kind of start and stop with the pandemic as far as when we get to see each other. So happy to see some new faces, some I already know. Um, second and on Carol, glad the farmer's market moving to Saturdays because now I can actually go. I uh, really love farmer's market. And second, Steve and Carol on the killer job that Kathy's been doing with, you know, just knocking out of the park with the events over the last year and a half. It has been an absolutely trying time. It is a monumental challenge. Say her name again so David can hear you. Oh, my name is Jensen Aver. Uh, no. Oh, her. Kathy. I was <laughs> 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 just say your name. Well, like it's on my side. <laughs> Kathy is a killer. She is absolutely crushing it. And I would not want to be in her shoes. And I do not wish the task that has been before you this last year. And you've done an excellent job. I know we all recognize it. And y'all's team is just so on top of it. And like Carol said, I'm glad to see all these things coming to the park. You know, things that we're, we're moving forward progressively as a city. And obviously, you know, I'm on the young side. I'm on the technology side. So seeing us incorporate all these things, like the, the selfie thing that the Easter egg hunt's going to do. That I've, I've never heard of that happening, but that is such a smart, progressive, technologically advanced thing to be able to bring that joyful encounter for these kids without actually having to get out of the car and expose themselves. So beautiful idea. Whoever you're working with, excellent choice. So keep up the great work. And Miss Laura Davidson. Thank you. I'm excited to be back on this board. I'm really excited to see all of the new things incorporated with some of the older things that we have. And yeah. I'm with the rest of them. I'm amazed and astounded, and you're doing an amazing job. Uh, and last but not least, uh, Kathy's doing a good job, David. She's doing an excellent job. Yes, sir. <laughs> I know you get all the credit, but I'm going to try to take care of that. One other thing. I'd like to welcome Sheila. Oh. Nobody said welcome, Sheila, so welcome, Sheila. Hi, Sheila. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Alderman, though. Uh, 
correct me now if I'm wrong, Sheila's and her husband own a barbecue wagon that you see up at the, I guess you all be up there for some of these events. I mean, you got a pretty good inside connection. Because the barbecue nachos, the barbecue yeah. nachos, they are the bomb. <laughs> I don't know about that. They We're got. We're gonna need them at every event. <laughs> they got uh, barbecue bologna. Well, we can do that too. Now I guess I got to be the bad guy. One of my members of my on my senior board said something to me about a month or so ago, and, and, and it's just stuck in my head. I'm going to say it here, and then Thursday when I have my senior meeting, I'm going to say it. And that person told me that we are not a working board, just like with the seniors. We are an advisory committee. Now, that's true. It's a true statement. I'm going to try to say this as nice as I can. But if we don't go out to these events and show up, make an appearance, and then you come in here on meeting night and give me advice or David, I'm, I'm not even going to really entertain the idea because if I can't introduce you to the people of Laverne and I can't them people can't put a face, and the next time they see you, they say, well, look at there, that person's on Park and Rec. I'm going to ask them a question. The chances of you knowing that question is probably slim to none. You may come to me. I may not know it. I'll go to Dave. We'll get them an answer. But the main thing is we want to be exposed out into the community. So with that being said, I hope I didn't hurt anybody's feelings. Uh especially you are. Now, Mr. Perry had called me before and was talking about some things, and I've brought this up in the past, and I still want to do it somehow. And I'm hoping that he'll help me. I want to have an all-female flag football game. <laughs> Mr. Sorry. Perry wants to get adult softball back with co-ed. Uh, we got to work with the strikers, of course. Well, with that. actually, they they only have the rights to the uh, eight fields at Veterans. Um, anything back here at Bicentennial was not included in their contract. I did not know that. Yeah. Was that in that contract? No, sir. It, it has never been in there. It was never in a contract. It was just um, assumed in the past contracts that those two fields included that, but it didn't, and... and uh, they were made aware of it, and uh, they didn't have an issue with it. Well, then I lied to you, sir. I didn't know that. I, I thought we had to work with them. So uh, if someone like yourself wants to do leg work on that, uh, I mean, I'll do what I can. Uh, I'm sure David and his park people will work with you at, at when they can. So I'd love to see some adult stuff. get. We love the kids. Don't nobody get mad at home. We love the kids. <laughs> I happen to know somebody that's coached women's football. Oh, yeah. But th those are just a couple of things that I want to talk about. And like I said, guys, when these events start, football. if these people are going to spend all the time they've got organizing this stuff, and you ain't got to come to every one of them. You ain't even got to come and stay. But if I, if I see you there, I can say, hey, guys, this is Laura Davison. She's on the, the Park and Rec board. If you see her out and you have some questions about it, please feel free to ask her. If she knows the answer, she'll let them know. If she don't, she'll get a hold of me or David or something. But I think that we need to become a board other than just advisory because – if you don't know what's going on in the city, you can't well advise anything. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So with that being said, it's good to see everybody again. Welcome to new members. And uh, 
I'll call this meeting adjourned.